Hey friendly neighbors, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood and you know I want to do a missing class on soulmates. So let's start with some FAQs so we're all on the same page about how I'm defining a soulmate. So the first question is, what is a soulmate? This is just my definition. A soulmate is someone with whom you have intense connection and chemistry. It's just someone who feels like you already know them when you meet them. They just feel familiar in a way you can't really explain. It's like part of your soul recognizes part of their soul. Like someone you've been longing for has finally come into your life and you recognize that and they feel familiar. Do we only have one soulmate in the whole world? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are like seven. No, that's from Kissing Jessica Stein, but I can personally tell you I've met three so far, and I think it's true for everyone that we all have more than one soulmate. Do we need to find a soulmate to be complete? Uh, no queen, you already are. Snap in Z formation. And the last question, can you have a good relationship with someone who's not your soulmate? Yes, you totally can. It's not like you have to meet this perfect person that some people sort of imagine a soulmate to be and then everything is going to be beautiful and happy all the time and you're never gonna argue about anything and you're gonna agree on everything and every day is going to be like the montage of a rom-com where it's like the best time and all sparkly rainbows and unicorns, like no. A soulmate's just someone who feels familiar to you, like you already know them, and you just have this really intense connection in chemistry that's very different from anything you felt with anyone else. Here's the thing about soulmates, though. Just because you love someone doesn't mean it's automatically healthy for you to be with them or that it's the right time to be with them. Sometimes the timing is not right because we perceive the world from where we are. And as we're evolving in our journey of empowerment and growing and changing, if we are interested in self-improvement, this is inevitable, we're not always gonna be at the same place. So we might need a soulmate or someone else who potentially we can be in a good relationship with, but we're just not in a place to have that healthy relationship. Let's look at two examples, of course, from the office of my fave soulmates. So the first example is Jim and Pam. Jim, obvious soulmates, look at them. But what happens at first is that Pam lacks the courage to leave a safe relationship right, that feels familiar in a different way. So her relationship with, with Roy is not exciting, it's not growing, it's not evolving. It's not healthy in those ways because growth is inevitable for personal improvement. And actually, growth is inevitable in a relationship in order to stay together over a long time. But she, at first, because of fear, chooses to stay in a safe relationship instead of the relationship she knows she would be happier in. When she says to Jim on beach day, I miss you, not everyone in the circle, just Jim, that takes a tremendous amount of courage. And when she's standing in that water and Jim comes up to her and says that he's never really come back, and she says, well, I wish you would. It's amazing the growth and evolution that she's gone through to get to that point where she's choosing to be courageous. She's choosing to live above fear because she knows that that relationship would be better for her. She's really known it all along, but she can finally take action. It's not just about saying, oh, I know this is healthier for me, or I want to do that, or this is better. You have to follow those things up with actual action to improve your life. Second set of soulmates, Michael and Holly, soup snakes. <laughs> if there were ever a 
more perfect soulmate example. I don't know who they were. I mean, I just love how Holly makes Michael the best version of himself. She inspires him to be better, right? Like all of a sudden, Holly's on the Ferris wheel next to Michael. So he's like, that's what reels in the she said. Like he knows all of a sudden, he understands sort of himself in a different way because he's perceiving the world in a different way. She's really opening up his eyes. And she's really, I just love how she like calms him down, right? He's not this like, you know, manic person desperate for people to like him. He's who he really is deep down. He's expressing himself finally, the true heart of him. And it's really beautiful to see. And then of course, Michael inspires Holly to be her dorktastic self which is so great. And I don't feel like anyone else has ever really allowed her to truly be herself. And that's the key in any healthy relationship, that the person you're with really needs to inspire you to be exactly who you are and to love exactly who you are and support exactly who you are. Our emotional state determines who we attract and who we're attracted to. So it's all about the energy you're radiating. The energy you radiate is the same energy that you receive. When I felt unworthy of the love I wanted to find, I was attracted to pain because pain was familiar to me and that felt comforting. So when I felt unworthy, I was attracted to people and I attracted people who were in tremendous pain and it made the relationship all about their pain and actually sort of lengthened the time that I lived in my pain. Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body and how we all come into the world with a pain body that's partially our genetics, which also contains, of course, our ancestors' genetics. So people who come from a long line of pain and suffering, they feel that. People who come from survivors, ultimate survivors, who are able to reach out and help other people who survived similar things, their pain body's not as strong. So again, it has to do with what I was talking about in the first min missing class, who the girl becomes. Some of us just come into the world with a stronger pain body, and some of us come into the world with more work to do. If you have more work to do because you have a very strong relationship with your pain that prevents you from having a healthy relationship with someone else, if you don't do that work, you're never going to have a healthy relationship. So unhealed pain really means that a relationship is destined to fail. Can you work out your pain while you're in a relationship? I mean, it's really difficult, I think, because I tried to do that and you keep having the same arguments about things, the same issues keep coming up. It's, it's really, again, just, it's not a healthy situation. It's not the relationship that you want to be in. When you no longer feel like you need a relationship, that's when you're strong enough to walk away from an unhealthy one. For years, I felt like I needed a relationship. Not only was there all this societal pressure about like, oh, are you out there? Are you meeting anyone? What you doing? But how people are, but it's how I was. I always wanted a boyfriend and then to get married and then to really share my life with someone. But I was so desperate to find someone and be with someone that I stayed in relationships that were unhealthy for too long. I mean, I was 17 in a relationship with my first boyfriend and I was thinking at the time, I better stay with him forever because no one else will ever love me again because I felt unworthy. At 17, I felt like that. Now that I'm empowered and I have the strength to create my dream life, I would rather be alone than be lonely in a relationship. I'm not lonely alone, partially because I've spent years cultivating my relationship with myself. I have a really good relationship with myself. You have to love yourself before you can really love someone else. 
if you don't love yourself, how can you have a relationship that's happy and healthy and love someone else the way they want and need to be loved? It just makes you sort of a bottomless void if you're always looking for someone else and thinking, okay, well, if I only find someone and if I finally get to be in a relationship with someone, then my problems are gonna go away, or then I'm gonna be happy, or then I'm gonna feel okay, or then I'm not gonna care about all of these people who are mistreating me, because it's gonna be totally different. Those are things that I thought when I was in high school. And it's just not true, because I was so entrenched in my own pain, and I had not yet worked out all of the issues that I needed to. Like if you don't put down the baggage you've been dragging around and unzip it and start taking out the parts and pieces that have been so heavy and weighing you down for so long, there's no way you have anything to really give to someone else. And a relationship has to be give and take. So when you're strong enough to say, you know what, I don't need to be in a relationship. I love myself and the relationship I have with myself is enough, but I would like to be. I mean, I would like to be, but it has to be with someone who also feels like they love themselves and respect themselves enough for the relationship to work. So I hope this has helped on your journey of self-empowerment and strength and let's be survivors helping each other to be stronger. And I'll see you next time for more Missing Class. Bye.